These were still the early days, but already there were defectors. It's a situation that speaks volumes about Jim Jones. I am a living witness. I've been out for seven years. For two, I ran for my life. Then I came to the realization that I am not going to run anymore. Yeah, it fears me that our people are after to kill me, but hey, I am not afraid anymore. If they want me, they know where I'm at, okay? She was so scrawny, I said to Jim Jones, I said, you know, Jim, I said, that girl's going to die on you. And his response was, well, many uh, good uh, revolutionaries died for what they believed in. There was a group of eight young people who knew he was a hypocrite, that he preached equality, yet his inner circle was all white. And so they wrote him a letter pointing all of these contradictions and hypocrisies out and made it public in the church. Jim Jones was furious. And people began to do the only thing they could do in a, in a dictatorial regime was they voted with their feet. That is, they left. They walked out. Early on, if someone left and they said something negative about him, that would be a huge deal to my father, devastating to my father. He didn't like people to leave him. He had a hard thing about people leaving him. He couldn't stand rejection. They would tell their stories about what was going on inside people's temple. Gradually, you realize you'd been sucked into uh, a situation where if you left, that you were a traitor, and he had vowed to have all traitors killed. Mr. Sly, do you think your husband is so far gone that he would even try to kill you? Oh, yes, without hesitation. I am a defector. I'm a traitor to him. And then the paranoia started to set in that the FBI was monitoring him, the CIA was monitoring him, all of these haters were around. It just went on and on and on. It's just a feeling you get. It's like, this is not right. This man is not right. And you just you have to look at, no, no, I'm not crazy. And I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this accurately. This man is not right. The first suicide practice happened in 1973. He would call them together and ask them whether this movement was worth dying for. I'm talking about planning your death for the victory of the people, for socialism, for communism, for black liberation, for oppressed liberation. He floats the idea. What about staging a, you know, a suicide to get attention, to protest capitalism in support of socialism. What do you people think about that? And they're shocked, you know? But he keeps bringing it up. Well, maybe we can have a group of people jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. Maybe what we should do is load a bunch of congregants onto an airplane and then shoot the pilot in the head. And that be the suicide. The inner circle was then invited to practice a kind of ritual that mimicked Holy Communion. Everybody gets a half a glass of, of wine, a little styrofoam cup of wine. I thought, cool, I hadn't drank any alcohol since I had been in the temple, so a little wine sounded good to me. And so everybody drank and said, well, that's a first. We never had any juice before. Fast forward five minutes, Jones says, you've all just been poisoned. You got an hour to live. And so, you know, obviously, you know, immediate adrenaline. We were all looking at each other, and then he started laughing a few minutes after that, and he said it was just a joke. He said, but you've passed the test, though. I know you're loyal uh, to the to the cause. Because when somebody's so principled, they're ready to die, the snap of a finger, you don't know how to handle it. And that's what I want to build in you, that same kind of character. I don't think Dad was practicing mass suicide when he would stage a suicide with drills. I think he was playing games, very sick games. None of us ever thought he would ever do anything to really harm us. We just figured that he was just playing around. It's just a little hocus pocus and that. If he says, yeah, I just poisoned you, you'd be like, oh, OK, no problem. Now, looking back on it, would the appropriate response for me have been, as soon as that meeting was over, to get the F out of Dodge. If this maniac is actually pretending to kill me, maybe this is a clue, Carter, that he's not the best person to be following. 
Jim Jones had become an object of worship. The rage was there, you could see it. The evil here is about power. Unquestioning obedience is what he looked for in his followers. Jim Jones so used the rhetoric and the attractive language of his time and place. He had a message that was handcrafted for the people of that time. And it drew a lot of people in. And they got in too deep to get out when they needed to. But we also have to be prepared to go to other places in the world if a dictatorship takes over. Because I told you, and I never have broke my word, I told you that not one of my children is going to end up in a concentration camp. I said they'll have to kill us all first. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.